Molecular Genetics, Applying Biotech in the Real World. Ala Um <clears throat> All right, uh, we're with Dr. Ruth Tenen talking about biology, and we're now going to cover applying biotech to the real world. It's kind of what we've been talking about. We're going to take this to the next level. So, Ruth, how are advances in molecular genetics applied to medicine? Walk us through, you know, molecular cloning and gene therapy and some of the, the, the state-of-the-art uh, uh, tools that we apply these days. Yeah, absolutely. So one thing that we kind of got into a little bit was the idea of making medicines in bacteria. That's something that requires recombinant DNA technology. Mm -hmm. So making insulin um, for diabetes, there's also um, artemisinin is a drug that's important for getting rid of malaria. So that's hmm. something that's now being made in, um, in yeast. So uh, how does that work? Is it like a, a, a blood thing they, that would be injected into people so they're resistant to the malaria? So that's a good question. I think right now it's, um, it's used as a drug after you have it, have, the, have gotten the disease. But the idea is basically you take the components that normally would make artemisinin in plants, that's where it's normally derived from, and you'd put all those genetic components into yeast cells and then they would churn out the drug for you and then you could just purify the drug and give it to people who had malaria. Hmm. Wow, yep. that's awesome. Um, what are some of the other things? Gene therapy, diagnosing diseases, vaccines. Yep. Um, can you walk us through a couple of examples that you know are striking in your head that that sort of illustrate how these really you know work when they work well? Sure, absolutely. So um, in the gene therapy arena, so one thing that people are working on, um, people who have hemophilia often have problems. They have mutations in their factor. Factor. Explain what hemophilia is for sure. Because hemophilia is a uh, just blood disorder where your blood can't be clot, so you're at risk of bleeding and bruising and things. So like that. one little cut and you can bleed to death exactly. because you don't. Okay. Yep. So let's say normally you have 100% of a clotting factor. You really only need about 10%, and you can function just fine. And so the idea that you could deliver um, using gene therapy, so you put the clotting factor gene into a plasmid or into a virus, mm -hmm. and you deliver that to people, and then they'd be able to produce the clotting factor that they were missing hmm. and not have hemophilia anymore. Um, oh, cool. In terms of disease diagnosis, so um, genetic diseases, so we know, for example, that people who have mutations in the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes are at increased risk of breast cancer. So if you were able to sequence someone's DNA using these new technologies and say, you have that mutation, there are sort of preventive things that you could do to, to prevent hmm. um, yourself from getting breast cancer. Let's say you had a bacterial infection and you wanted to know which antibiotic to take. You could sequence the DNA of those bacteria and say, oh, this is the right antibiotic for me rather than getting a broad spectrum one. Um, wow, cool. And, and we've talked a bit about uh, uh, genetically modified plants mm -hmm. and agriculture and it resistant to pesticides and so on. How should we think about biotechnology as applied to agriculture? I think the, the major concerns about sort of GM crops are these ecosystem damage things. So you could imagine that, yeah, you make a plant that's resistant to pesticides, and, but then you keep applying more and more pesticides, you get these super weeds that they can, they can then spread. So I think people are trying to be as careful as possible and kind of cordon off the areas of the GM crops compared to the regular crops, but it's definitely something to monitor and you probably wouldn't see the effects in, until later For, on. Oh wow, yeah. yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, okay, that was Applying Biotech in the Real World with Dr. Ruth. How are advances in molecular genetics applied to medicine? What are other examples of advances in biotech, like gene therapy, diagnosing diseases, vaccines, all that fun stuff? How should we think about biotechnology as applied to agriculture?